Hey guys, today I'm going to be making a video on my settings in Flight Simulator and Rex, which is Real Environment Extreme. Some of you may not know what that is. Uh, if you don't, I strongly recommend that you check them out, uh, realenvironmentextreme.com um, and my fsx.cfg settings uh, because I've been getting um, flood loads of questions about this, as you can imagine, over the past two years, which I've been doing Flight Simulator videos, actually past three years, since 2007. Uh, I've gotten numerous amount of questions uh, concerning my FSX settings um, and I've had to address each email and each PM individually because the cases are different and it's uh, a lot harder to write all this than it is to just do a screencast. Uh, so this is an overdue video. My mic's had some problems. Luckily it's working right now so I can do this tutorial or not tutorial but overview and uh, hopefully you'll uh, learn a couple of tips from it. Uh, so without further ado, let's go in FSX. Uh, and uh, we're in the settings tab. Uh, we can go ahead and click customize now. Um, and this is a set. Uh, this is a display tab within settings. Uh, graphics um, device. I have two GPUs in one card, uh, which is a 4870X2. But um, this is just for the second monitor, which I use 16-bit for panels and stuff. Uh, this is my primary monitor. Uh, target frame rate unlimited. Sometimes I'll put that to 60. It depends if I'm getting any skipping or not. It uh, just depends on the day. Um, my screen resolution 1920 by 1200, which is my max at 32 bit depth. Uh, filtering, anastropic, anti aliasing checked, lens flare checked. Uh, I don't use DirectX 10. It's um, not really finished, it's still a preview. They never did finish it, so it doesn't work with some things. Um, light bloom off, advanced animations obviously on. Global texture resolution very high. Uh, aircraft obviously at the highest. Uh, it's not really a performance issue there. Now, um, the scenery tab. Uh, level of detail radius large, mesh complexity 30, and mesh and texture resolution uh, at max sliders. Now this obviously depends on the scenery and what I'm doing. Sometimes I'll adjust these sliders. Sometimes this will go to 10 uh, meters and you know this will go to 7 centimeters or 30 centimeters. It just depends what I'm doing. Um, but water low 2.x is something I always keep at low 2.x and this is a tip I picked up from another video about some other guys settings of quite a long time ago probably a year and a half I can't remember I actually liked this videos quite a bit um, can't remember who it was but that is beside the point the point is that low 2.x gives the same kind of look uh, as uh, the highest setting in fact if you if you uh, if you don't want to go to low 2.x, I suggest high 2.x because they they basically look the same. Low 2.x with sparkling Rex water pretty much looks as realistic as I could wish for. Uh, so I'm fine with that. Uh, scenery complexity very dense and autogen density dense. Now obviously, like I said, these sliders will change. It depends, um, and it's also worth noting that my in my uh, landing in the beats video, I had the water on max or high 2.x. I can't remember. Um, just for the maximum possible effect. Uh, special effects detail high uh, and definitely not uh, ground scenery sh cast shadows. That's a very bad idea to turn that on. Uh, moving on to the weather. Um, now ATI cards are very numerous for being very bad at handling clouds, uh, which is true. Uh, they are not good at clouds at all, uh, which is a bummer. But I didn't buy this PC for FSX. Um, it's really a multitasking PC, so I was more concerned about that. Uh, the cloud draw distance, 60 miles. I would recommend this even if you have a good card that can handle it, because in real life, you can't really see past that anyway. Uh, or so I've heard from real pilots. Um, detailed clouds, coverage uh, high. Um, no winds aloft, no change. Traffic is the last tab. Airline density, 100. Again, this depends where I am, what I'm doing. General aviation, that's as small planes. I don't show aircraft labels. I have road vehicles at 100. Again, these sliders are at the bottom and they depend. These are just my state right now, which currently I'm filming a FSX video for a scenery, which should be coming out pretty soon. And if you're watching this sometime in the future, that should already be on my channel uh, for future people. <laughs> uh, anyways, um, those were my basic FSX settings. They change over time. Now uh, let's move on to my Rex settings, uh, which is, uh, for those of you who don't know what Rex is, it's a real environment extreme. It replaces everything from um, basically all the textures you could think of in FSX. Uh, it re uh, uh, enhances them, um, which is really good. Uh, I definitely recommend this if you're going to get something that makes FSX look better. 
Um, first of all, options. Um, usually I'll put this to 24 uh, x 2048 uh, HD. Uh, I wouldn't take the highest one. Again, ATI cards, bad at clouds. That's why I don't do it. Um, water resolutions, uh, all this you can just you know, view in 720p and uh, look at it. I don't need to guide you through all these, but um, anyways, this is where it matters, the theme creation. Sky theme, uh, I use uh, candy for sunrise. I use tropics antiqua for daytime. Uh, for sunset, I use ice. Um, cloud theme, I use uh, 33, set 33 HD enable. And for the Cirrus, I use 01, pretty basic stuff. Um, again, the island and ocean water, these are things that don't really matter that much. Uh, these you can just tweak yourself. Tropical water, uh, I use Great Barrier uh, with no, no tweaks. Now, the, the wave animation, I highly recommend sparkling. It's uh, very realistic at high altitudes. You can see the sparkling effect on the water. Um, that's what I use. I have always used it in every video. Uh, asphalt Runway, uh, set 7. Asphalt Taxiway, set 1. Concrete Runway, set 6. Concrete Taxiway, uh, set 6 again. Uh, let's move on to parking. Parking, uh, taxiway markings, scuffed, runway markings, enhanced, airport marking, 2, surface, uh, refraction, soaked. And last is sun and lighting. Um, this is probably one of the interesting parts. Um, the sun I have on blazing, uh, so the first one. The flare I have on glitter. Lightning, forked, uh, landing lights, golden, aircraft strobes, soft, runway lights, luminous. And that's it for the Rex settings, pretty much. Um, now, the last part of this video will be um, my fsx.cfg. And for those of you who don't know what that is, again, Google will tell you what that is. If you Google fsx.cfg, you will find out uh, what it is. It's basically your... Uh, file where FSX's settings are stored and you can insert certain tweaks in here. Now, I put a download link in the description of this video where you can download my FSX.CFG and add certain parts if you want. Now, keep in mind I haven't touched this thing in a year, so I won't be able to tell you exactly what everything does. Um, the affinity mask is for uh, a quad core. It, it's supposed to help. Again, don't quote me on anything I say within this FSX.CFG. I'm really not uh, entirely certain about that. That's supposed to help with the quad core. Uh, texture bandwidth multiplier, that's something to do with the texture bandwidth multiplication. Uh, these are the light settings. Um, you can tweak these if you want higher, if you want more in uh, intense strobes and stuff like that. It's all up to you. Uh, but yeah, this is in my description. Um, it's supposedly supposed to help a little bit with F uh, FPS and load stuff from further away a bit nicer. Um, so basically those were my FSX settings, uh, it's what I use right now, it's what I will be using probably for the remainder of, uh, the remainder of whatever I do. Um, so they're worth noting if you really want to get some good performance and you have um, lower spec hardware, I'd suggest upgrading. There's no really easy fix uh, or tweak that can help you performance hardware and spending a lot of money on it is the only way to go here. Uh, if you're getting a PC for FSX, uh, I'd recommend NVIDIA uh, since they're good at clouds and they produce a better performance in FSX over the ATI cards. Uh, not starting a fanboy fight here. I have ATI myself, so <laughs> don't jump at me. Um, and uh, it's also worth mentioning that a high clock speed on the CPU is important to gain a lot of performance in FSX as it's, um, well, it's not been coded the best and it doesn't like uh, to use all the cores efficiently. So if you have a high clock speed like 4.2 gigahertz on the first core, you'll get a lot more performance than if you're with a 2.8 gigahertz or, you know, something similar. Uh, it's worth noting my specs in case you don't already know them. They'll also be in the description. I have a Core i7 at 3.8 gigahertz. Uh, I have 12 gigabyte of DDR3 triple channel memory, a 1100 watt PSU. I have a one terabyte spin point Samsung, uh, 640 Western Digital, a 80 gigabyte Intel SSD, the Asus P60 Deluxe, and uh, a water cooling kit from XTC or something like that. I can't remember, but um, that's pretty much it. It's been a long video. Hopefully, 
you uh, can pick up some things from this. And um, yeah, I'll see you next time when I decide to make another um, video tutorial. Uh, like I said, another FSX video coming out very soon. Stay tuned for that. And if you're in the future, it should already be there. Check for Zante X scenery. So that's all for me today, and uh, I'll see you next time.